uh, start with the again i want to start with the uh, from the element of the talent uh, so i was telling there are three basic or important elements in the uh, talent management what they say is attract develop and retain the employees uh, why do we attract and how uh, why do we develop or why do we retain the employees to meet our current and future organizational need so in the yesterday's class we have we have discussed uh, a bit about this slide and we went next uh, to the next slide uh, about attracting the talent and we were discussing uh, the uh, treat the talent as a customer i give an example that how you attract the customer how you make sure that the customer should buy your product and make sure that the needs and wants of the customer is fulfilled full fit the similar wise the person the key person or a talented person uh, whom you are acquiring in your organization you should make sure that the uh, that talented person or a key person should be treated as a customer so that he could buy uh, he can buy a position in your organization uh, if he is considered as a product so you are buying a position to him uh, or her so this is about the treating talent as a customer which we have discussed in yesterday's class also so we'll move on to the next point that is uh, in attracting talent that is promise feature reward recognition with stock options other ownership option and performance based by packages you might be wondering why madam is saying the rewards and recognition and she is uh, telling some stock option and all uh, in hrm and all we have studied uh, about rewards and recognition means it is like promotion bonus incentive fringe benefits we have studied like that we have also studied the stock option and ownership options also um, uh, i just want to uh, remind you that what we have discussed in the last class that uh, see here we are talking about the executive level of employees when i am talking about the talent management i am talking about the executive level of employees or a research and uh, the employees who are working in a research and development or in a very important project or a new project such employees i am talking about okay and it's not a worker class or a labor class employees i'm talking about who are happy with the uh, diwali bonus or a christmas bonus um, uh, like monetary benefits uh, so when we want to make these people happy the key people or executive level people happy means we have to give the rewards and recognition in a higher level like giving them options in your uh, giving them a uh, giving them an option to buy the stocks in your own company having a uh, giving them a uh, uh, part of a ownership okay not complete ownership or percentage of a ownership very very minimal percentage it might be percentage of ownership and uh, performance based pay packages okay uh, from give if you are giving if your organization is having such facility then the uh, the people will join your organization if the other company is not giving a stock options or a ownership shares then uh, the people uh, may be get attracted to your organization than the other organization okay third uh, of your third point here i have given is a have a flexible work environment work environment and positive culture uh, students you might be understanding this fl flexible work environment in a current situation better than the other situation it is a right situation to explain you about the flexible work environment so you all are students let us not tell about you because you are all students let us talk about me i am an employee of a government of karnataka under department of collegiate education this particular department given me a flexibility to take the online classes and complete the syllabus okay so this is one example of flexibility i'm talking here okay flexible work environment means it is not restricting the time uh, that you have to come at 9 log out at 5 or you have to work uh, 8 hours you have to work 9 hours you have to work 48 hours it's not like that you have to use this particular resources in the organization you should not touch that department you should not interact interact with the other department people you should not if you are finance guy don't talk to a marketing executive that's not like that you should give them a, a flexibility especially to the women employees uh, women employees uh, these days who, who women are uh, you know uh, taking the key position in a many organization we can see uh, they are at the ceo level cfo levels they are you know working so for such people such employees we can give a flexibility hours flexibility work from home opportunity 
uh, and you know that they can access a remote uh, work facility means they can access company logins any, uh, anywhere if they are in the vacation also they can join the meetings uh, through using digital platform such are the uh, flexible work environment if you are providing them then uh, definitely uh, the people will get attracted to your company and they will join so for example let we are all living in bangalore let us take an example of bangalore only if your company is an electronic city and you are putting up in vijayanagar see how far it is electronic city from vijayanagar okay if your company says that uh, okay uh, you you need not to travel uh, uh, two weeks a day you can work from home so definitely you will choose that company uh, rather going to the company which is not giving you a flexibility uh, so if you have a child a small child a feeding child uh, you, you cannot go to the office at the uh, login to the office at the nine o'clock in the morning if they are giving you 11 uh, uh, the shift timings so they are flexible giving a flexibility that you can come at 11 and you can you know uh, calculate your uh, nine hours or eight hours and you can log out a particular time such type of flexibility if you give uh, the talent or, or the the people will you know get attracted to your company positive culture means having a good communication system you know a friendly environment in an organization taking the feedback positively criticism positive criticism you have to accept such type of culture you know a social group you have to uh, develop uh, in your organization uh, to make sure that work is running smoothly such kind of culture if you build in the organization people will you know that uh, that culture uh, what you are giving in organization it will go by word of mouth you you may say ma'am i'm still in, I'm doing mba how would i know that uh, the company is giving flexible work or a positive work culture you know that that kind of things which will not uh, we cannot hide them it will be uh, marketed it will be promoted to word of mouth from employee to employee if your seniors are working there or if your colleagues uh, if your relatives if your neighbors are working there then they say that after the after you know in may you can join so and so particular organization it is giving so many benefits to the employee so that's that type of you know positivity uh, about the company organization will spread over the uh, by word of mouth and the people uh, will get attracted to uh, put their resumes in your organization uh, next come to the uh, fourth point provide proper training and research facility okay the many companies stay here okay uh, what they do many organization what they uh, think is uh, if he is uh, joining at an executive level or a managerial level they think that this person is already having 10 years 15 years of experience in this particular field we need not to spend uh, money or a cost on training to a particular person so this is wrong okay because every organization work environment work culture work policies are different okay so that's why we have to train every individual who is joining an organization we have to induct them then and then we have to train them according to the uh, requirement of a person how much knowledge he is having and how much knowledge we have to give about this particular organization and about the process or about the project where he has working and the roles and responsibilities whether he might know the, some basic roles everywhere it is same some ba basic roles and responsibilities of the position he might be knowing but he might not be knowing a peculiar or a particular role or a responsibility he has to perform in this particular organization in, in your organization what kind of role he has to perform he might not be knowing it so that's why we have to give him a training and we have to give a research facilities to create some uh, if he is a creative thinker if he's an innovator if he thinks differently or if he thinks out of the box then we have to give him a research facility every department it is not like in an organization there is a r d department is there research and development department research and development must go in uh, must go through in that department only nobody else should uh, think about the research facilities no it is not uh, it is not like that every individual should actively participate in the research facilities so that they can give their views ideas thoughts and uh, you never know which idea or which thought may 
give us success or give a better product or a better uh, idea uh, uh, you never know so that's why we have to you know give them the uh, training and a research facility next we'll come to practice visionary management and leadership uh, students you might be knowing that what is leadership or not the basic management skill so every manager is not a leader but uh, every leader is a manager such kind of quotes you might have heard okay uh, so i'm going to talk more about visionary management in visionary management i can say it is about leaders again um, what kind of a person comes under the visionary management what is this visionary management as well? we can say combinedly the seven traits we uh, call them seven traits are combinedly called as a visionary management traits they are uh, first one is favorable towards innovation so the person who is a visionary manager or a visionary leader he is favorable towards the innovation okay means he he is a creative person he wants to work in a new project or he want to try new acquisition or he want to try expand his product line such person is called as innovative person so he is always try to do or innovation second is resilience we say resilience is something uh, it's like when you watch kind of a movie there will be a uh, uh, there will be a hero on the uh, he, uh, the hero will come to from foreign universities and all he studies here from abroad he comes to india and he joins a, a workspace or in, in an organization he joins there he has to face the politics system uh, he want to do something good but he has to have a hindrance of a policy system some political pressure some economical pressure so these all you might have seen in some 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 movies like that hero or heroine is suffering so uh, this uh, resilience explains the same that you have to work under the pressures uh, company politics and against the old ideas people don't want to change their old thought of school uh, they don't want to come we want to hang to the old banyan tree which my father has planted like that of you know attitude uh, the people might be having in the organization they don't want to see the change in the organization some people will be there they may be your owners or they may be a management people or your fellow colleagues or executive or they can be anybody so in such environment you have to work and you have to overcome that that is there the third one is strategic thinker you should always think about the long term and uh, a bigger picture that is strategic things about it is not like today a technical it is not a tactical planning strategic planning is it's a long term and a bigger picture we have the, uh, the person should think that is one quality another quality is intelligent risk taker intelligent risk taker is nothing but a moderate risk taker i can say that he has to take the risk if you want to capture the new market new product or a new product line or a new project there will be always a uncertainty about the results so this uncertainty is called as a risk so um, this risk uh, intelligent risk taker uh, will always you know ascertain the uncertainty and he always uh, try to uh, make out the measures to overcome this uncertainty and make sure that the goals or the results should be achieved out of the whatever the uh, risk we are taking okay then he is uh, the fifth one is an expert organizer Uh, expert organizer is nothing but he uh, you know organizing means what it is departmental wise functional wise team so operation wise we divide the organization and you know uh, we allot the work delegate responsibility roles and all those things that is called as organization so the person who is a visionary manager or a visionary leader is a expert organizer he know which department should be divided and delegated according to the functions and according to the roles and according to the teams and according to the operations okay then uh, next is uh, 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 is there any girl called nikita in your class yes ma'am she is calling me maybe she want to uh, that's what i told you with the not allow sorry 
ma'am ah uh, uh, for girls who are uh, trying to join i think uh, they are not able to join ma'am two three Wait. yeah nikita and nandini they are trying to join this should not happen you know see i my flow got break Where they are not there, no? They are not in the waiting room. Unlocked. They are not in the waiting room. Are you seeing my screen? No, right? No, ma. <coughs> okay, let's start again. Uh, so uh, I was talking about uh, again uh, expert organizing. Then the sixth point is intensely focused and enthusiastic. He should be focused. Uh, the leader should be focused leader. and intensely focus we are not uh, saying here means whatever the goal mm, uh, he has said he has to now you can see the screen right yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, yes, ma uh, so intensely focused person means if any goal is there means he has to focus towards achieving that particular intensely he has to focus towards that goal and the enthusiast uh, equally he should be a uh, energetic and enth enthusiastic towards achieving that goal seventh one is skill communicator so he should be you know good communicator you know all about this so i'll just uh, give you the all seven traits of visionary management once again the first one is favorable towards innovation second one is resilience third one is strategic thinker fourth one is intelligent risk taker fifth one is expert organizer Sixth one is intensely focused and enthusiastic. Seventh one is skilled communicator. Okay, now uh, we'll go to the next point that is conduct performance reviews and uh, succession planning. So you might uh, you might know all know about this uh, uh, performance reviews. It is nothing but performance appraisal, right? Like you have studied so many, so many techniques in a performance appraisal. methods and all so whichever the person whether is a key person or a worker there should be a performance reviews all uh, uh, it should uh, run a performance appraisal system runs in every organization so uh, perform after performance appraisal we have to give the particular person a review about his performance whether he is doing well whether he is achieving his you know potential the maximum potential which we are talking about that is his self actualization whether he is reaching or He is in a path to reach it. What could you help in reaching it, and what could he himself or herself help to reach that, uh, uh, you know, potential maximum potential? Uh, we have to um, uh, give the reviews about it and succession planning, uh, students. Uh, about this, you will study in detail uh, in the coming chapters. Uh, let us uh, let me give you a brief about what is called as succession planning. so succession planning is nothing but uh, you might heard of uh, i am the successor your brother is a success of successor in your family for this generation what it means that he is a person who is carrying your family name or he is you know inherited all the uh, thing uh, all, all the properties uh, good wills from your family and he is going to you know to the next generation he is going to transfer that or you are going to transfer that he or she it is let us not be gen no gender discriminatory you know? so uh, it uh, you might heard about uh, this word successor so exactly the same thing applies in the organization also if you apply this thing into the organization say for example you have an executive person who dies immediately without you know ha um, some heart attack or accident he dies the next day that position should be filled okay that company cannot run without an executive 
okay there will be a acting executive for a period of time but after that you have to fill that position so for recruiting uh, or you know uh, this takes a time so that's what what organization will do they prepare the people inside the organization in a such uncertain period uh, situations so that they can be taken over by that uh, positions like uh, they are prepared to assume the roles as they available they might be a retirement or they may be a, a deaths or they might be a replacement or they quit the organization and join the other organization in such type they are the other people you have to prepare the next person uh, if a person a is a finance chief executive officer you are a cfo so say for example mr shankar you have to prepare mr ramesh who is working exactly under him to fill in this position when the um, you know a person who shankar is leaving this organization or he might meet any uncertainty so in that time the next person who is ramesh is, is available to fill up that position so this is what succession planning means so uh, this is how by you by applying all this aspect we can attract the talent to our organization next we'll go what is the next element attracting then developing the talent attracting may say that attracting will go to the recruitment to selection so if you in basic hr process if you see recruitment to selection we can say the attraction attracting the talent now i'm talking about developing the talent so identify your own talent before hiring new talents in is a beneficial so first what we have to do we have to uh, uh, better to find out the talents who can fill up the position inside the organization who can fill up the next upper position than you know finding them in the outside the uh, outside terrain like it is difficult also time consuming cost consuming so it is better to identify our own talents inside the organization that is what it means then identify the talent notice uh, notice and identify the obvious talent use a performance based identification tool and use a test based identification tool so how do we identify the talent inside the organization notice and identify uh, the obvious talents means it's by observation method so people will be observing you while you are working so that if your team leads so say for example he quit and he joined the other organization the uh, the, the managers or the assistant managers will be looking every time with the way you perform the way you can uh, behave in the meeting the way you, whether you are uh, able to conduct the you know um, uh, training whether you are able to you know handle the situation this all will be observed by your seniors in the organization while you are performing the work Uh, so by observation also they will identify the talent so that if this person is leaving so that they immediately okay this person can fill in this position in this own team we can put this person into a upper position like that we can say or we can you know performance based identification to your performance appraisal card with your report card will be there by looking at that report card we may say that okay if this person in a hierarchy level if this person is moving out Of, uh, uh, somehow he is leaving the organization so according to the performance based points we can fill up a particular person by uh, his uh, looking at his performance next one is um, use a test uh, conducting if um, if the person leaves the organization then conduct a test to every eligible people in the not to everyone i'm telling eligible people i'm telling so you can conduct a test to el eligible people in the organization so whoever uh, outperform in the test they, they can fill up the position or uh, the third point say if you cannot identify the talent then you have to grow the grow their own talent means talent can be acquired we have we have already discussed about it it is not by birth we can everybody is not, not talented by birth uh talent can be acquired so, uh, so how talent can be acquired by training uh, learning uh, so uh, by giving trainings and development programs we can you know make our people like how we discussed in succession planning make our people ready uh, how we make our people ready to occupy the uh, vacant seats uh, by giving them training and development okay so that is how we can grow their our in house talents okay build a culture where talent can 
turn their dreams into reality okay um, you might have a you know while you joining the organization as a, a fresher uh, you might uh, have a, a dream that i want to uh, Uh, be an executive position in a 15 years or something like that with that dream a uh, fresher will join an organization so even organization uh, will know that the uh, uh, employees uh, uh, objective also as well as organizational objective also should reach uh, together they have to reach the objective of each other so by uh, providing the proper uh, you know sorry uh, by you know uh, Uh, building the culture that you, if you are dreaming today to become someone in in our organization if you are no one uh, today in our organization if you are just your name today tomorrow you may have a prefix and suffix next to your name in in our organization if you are dreaming to become someone we are providing you a platform to become someone something like that or you know they sell the dreams to the um, uh, new talents and that they uh, uh, recruit them and they you know grow the talent to become a reality one day uh, who knew that uh, an indian uh, uh, boy will become a world uh, you know uh, chief executive of a world uh, the, the largest the biggest and a monopoly you can say uh, organization like a google uh, chief executive of such a company okay he has dreamt in a, in a his room uh, one day i want to become so and so and he worked towards it and the company also provided the opportunity for such people you know to make use of their talent and you know they make them uh, make their dreams come to reality so this is about the uh, developing talent third element is retaining the talent okay uh retaining so a uh, first is attracting second one is developing so these two are uh, important but what i am talking now that is retaining the talent is very much important uh, uh very very much important see uh, people get attracted easily uh, if you give a good advertisement or if you just to brag about your company simply you are talking too much good about the company or spreading too too much good about your company so the people you know uh, uh, get attracted to your company and they will join also after that you develop them you give them an opportunity to grow themselves their talent is growing everything is happening in the organization they are getting hands in parallel also after learning from your organization after certain years they'll always quit and look for the better opportunity and uh, you know because of boredom because of uh, the daily routine work or because of you know not appealing job no challenging job or uh, because of some good monetary benefits um, something like that people may change many reasons there are many reasons people will often change the organization or the other organization is you pursuing him continuously that because he is or she is a very good Uh, key people if that person joins the organization the organization structure the organization completely will take a take a paradigm shift or it will turn 180 degree shift will happen to the organization in such situation such key people you should retain them you should not you know allow them to leave your organization at any circumstances so you have to take care uh, uh, of your talent like that so how to do it okay how to Uh, do it. so a uh, first point says uh, girls can be continue um, just a second 